Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got four replays in the Soviet Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the Senjutsu TO-55. Now if you do like the video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below, as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the Senjutsu TO-55, it's one of the Metal Fest tanks, it's coming back next week, so I thought, hey, why not play it so and get some replays and show you guys what this tank is like, like I'm going to try and do for all of the other Metal Fest tanks as we go along. And yeah, the Senjutsu, it is a damn solid tier 8 premium medium tank. It's basically the T-54, the old school T-54, but as a tier 8 premium. Because it's got the same gun as that one. Not quite the DPM that that old school T-54 used to have, but it's still pretty damn nice. You've got... Near enough the same armor on the hull. The turret armor is slightly worse because the cupolas are more pronounced and they're easier to hit. So you can get pen through those cupolas a lot easier than on your standard T-54 turret. So be careful of that. But on the whole, the tank is very, very good. Because you also have a flamethrower as your multi-weapon system. And that flamethrower is one of the very useful flamethrowers. Because quite a lot of the flamethrowers that are in at the minute aren't that useful. You know the Churchill OK, you've got a flamethrower, but your gun fires that fast that you very rarely feel the time or chance to use it. Plus it's fixed to the hull, right, which is awkward. TVPV to you, that flamethrower is quite decent. You know, it's multi-weapon system again, but again, it's fixed to your hull. So it's where your hull is facing, which can be a bit awkward again at times. Then you've got the, the Soldier on, M67 Zippo, which... That flamethrower is just not very useful at all, because it's on the main cannon. And the only time it's ever useful is if you're against a Type 5 or a mouse that you will struggle to pen with your 250 heat pen. Apart from that, it's just that you may as well just stick to your main DPM weapon with AP or heat. And it's just not that useful. With this, I can use the main cannon, fire the 201 penetration AP rounds, which are really nice at tier 8. And then just flame away if I get close, which can then just keep the damage ticking non-stop. It's just the viability of the fact that this tank can just go all in and you will not sacrifice time in damaging the vehicle you're, you're attacking because it's just non-stop with the flamethrower. You fire, flamethrower. Keep your eye on your reload, then fire again and get the flamethrower going again, you know? The only time it can be a bit of a pain sometimes is if people actually have fire extinguishers and put it out and therefore you see the little fire flame symbol above the head and the, they've put it out and are now not able to be set on fire for another like 10 seconds or something like that. But yeah, the Senjutsu does have that 100mm cannon that you do get on the object 416, but it's the gun that was before they buffed it. So 201 pen on the standard AP with 330 heat pen, which is just filthy. It's just filthy at tier eight as a heat pen because you absolutely go through everything, everything you're ever gonna face. The penetration on this tank is nice for that in the fact that you don't really have to worry about facing tier tens in particular alike because obviously you're 201 penetration on your standard AP, for sure. 201 penetration on your standard AP is going to struggle at times. But you load 330 heat pen and you don't struggle anymore. You just absolutely butcher everything. And it is a beautiful, beautiful experience. And obviously, adding the fact that you do have the flamethrower as well, which you can use to good effect, and you are going to have a great time. At this current moment in time, you see me use the flamethrower. I'm not actually trying to shoot the Yag Tiger. What I'm trying to destroy, destroy is all the cover and the houses around that Yag Tiger. I'm just trying to destroy it all so that we can basically get free shots at the side of him if he moves into a position where we can just see above the ridge line. But yeah, you do have the flamethrower, which is very, very helpful for situations like this where you've got clear debris, but then when you're also struggling to pen something. This vehicle has 55 km in our top speed, which is very, very nice. You do hit that top speed as well as you do have a 17.02 power per ton ratio. Which means that, yeah, you will hit 55 kilometers now quite easily. You have 23 kilometers an hour reverse speed, by the way, which is very, very good. And means you can get back behind cover very, very quickly, which is very, very good. You also have very good ground resistances. There is a lot that is very, very good about this tank, by the way. There is a lot that is very, very good about this tank. The ground resistances are incredible, which means you will never be held back in that regard. You've got 322 meters of still concealment with the build that I have, which is great. You've got 486 meters of view range, which is uh, it's still great, but it's not quite at the level of some of the other tier 8 mediums, but it's still, it's still good enough. 
You've got a 7.44 second reload with the build that I have. Obviously, if you boost for food, it will get even quicker, which is 2.5k DPM. And with the AP shall have a thousand a second meters, well, a thousand and seventy, sorry, meters a second shell velocity, and eight ninety five on the heat rounds. Bear in mind that if you do load the heat rounds, they do go slower than your standard AP rounds, so it will take a little bit longer for them to get to target. So you do have to lead a little bit more. Being typically Soviet, by the way, means that this tank does have five degrees of gun depression, which means gameplay can be a bit awkward on maps with ridgelines, like Prokhorovka that you're seeing here. It means you've got to adapt to find different ways of getting around your gun depression, which is what we're trying to do in this replay at the minute. We do have 1.93 second aim time, by the way, and with a 1.86 accuracy during movement and a 1.21 accuracy during rotation, that isn't that good, but because your aim time is at 1.93 your aim circle goes down very very quickly and this gun is very very nice this tank is just a, such a great tank so what do i run in terms of a crew and equipment well in terms of a crew and equipment on the senjutsu i do run born leader rapid reload six cents situational awareness camouflage expertise silent driving steady aim snapshot run and gun and in terms of the equipment, I run the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to get my view range up to that 486 meters of view range that we have. The gun stabilizer to get the accuracy uh, during movement and rotation down to 1.21 and 1.86. Which is still not that great, but it means that the bloom of the gun is way smaller than it would be without the gun stabilizer. And the advanced loader to make that 2.5k DPM. All three gun perks again to help this gun sing as much as possible because it can be a bit of a pain if you don't help it. The silent driving and camouflage expertise to make the most of the camo and make it so that I can stay still stealthy in certain situations, and especially if I decide to be an aggressive bush dweller on Westfield, for example, I can stay unspotted for quite a while, and that will help me be able to keep farming out damage, but also spot and stay unspotted and just get, get tons of beautiful assistance. So you can see this first game on Prokhorovka, we've got 3.9k assistance so far and 3.1 thousand damage. There's only four tanks left on the enemy team. It is a tier 10 game, which is obviously not a very good matchup here for a tier 10, sorry, tier 8 medium tank. But we've had a good time. We're up to 7k combined. And I'm just thinking, okay, you know what, let's see if we can spot the guys in the back corner, which will feed us a bucket load of assistance. But as we poked over, we didn't see them. And they saw us, which made me go, absolutely not. I don't want to take the hit yet. But I'm still thinking, you know, I, I do want to get into this corner. Because if I spot them, I'm going to get a butt ton of assistance. And that's what we want. And we actually spotted the 3105, which gave us another 5-600 assistance there. The defender that was over there died as well. I think, you know what, now, now's the time. If it wants to shoot me, it can shoot me. But we get a shot in the move into the Turan. Sadly, we didn't spot the Turan like I was hoping, and therefore we didn't get any of the assistance. But I just decided with the only one or two tanks left, it was just worth it just to charge, see if we could spot them. I mean, if they ended up shooting us, there was a possibility they would have got spotted by us, and therefore my team that was all sitting behind us would have fed us a ton of assistance. But it is what it is. Finished with the victory, two kills, 3.4k damage, 4.4... Oh, that is a really... Satisfying assistance, 4,444. The first class, the Confederate. 2,080 base XP is a first class. Probably sums up the tank a little bit, if we're honest. That that higher base XP is only a first class. But that was a really good game for a tier 10 lobby for the Senjutsu T055. Especially on a map that can be a bit awkward for the Senjutsu. Because, what, well, ridge lines, 5 degrees of gun depression can be awkward. And it can, yeah, it can make that whole fight really awkward at times as well. So we're on to the second replay, and the second replay, we are on Dragon... Not Dragon's Ridge. I was about to call it Empire's Border. It's not Empire's Border, that's PC. Great Wall! We're on Great... What, brain sometimes, you know. We're, we're on Great Wall, and on Great Wall, what I'm going to do is push as quickly as possible to J2, and by getting there, hopefully I'll be able to get a free shot or two, or use my flamethrower against tanks that are cutting down the 1-2 line, and... Just get some early damage. It is a tier 10 lobby, which could make this pretty awkward. Especially if some of the high tier medium tanks get here before me and have better gun depression, then my day will be very difficult. So we've got to the ridge where we want to be, and we've found a Leopard 1. It's like, hello, Mr. Leopard 1. We get a free shot into him, and you know what? If he's there with his hull downiness, we're just going to fire the flamethrower. 
We try and get the second shot into the Leopard 1, but sadly we hit the ridge line, which can happen with this gun. Sometimes it does like missing, which can be annoying. We've got 0.3 accuracy with the build that we have, which is actually really good. But still, the gun decides, you know what, I could have hit that. But nah, and you saw that again with the shot on the side of the, the Leopard 1 a second ago. The Leopard 1 is clearly very scared of me because of my flamethrower and I'm constantly flaming him. Which is another, it's a scare tactic tool that you can use. Oh no, he got done by a Sturm Tiger. That poor guy. That poor guy. But you can use it as a scare tactic. People think, oh no, I don't want to take damage. And while you're reloading, that gives you the chance to get your reload in. And then you, by the time they decide, oh, he's not flaming me anymore... You can just get them with the main reload. And by the time the main reload's back, your flames are back as well. So you can use it as a good scare tool to ward off your prey, essentially. But we've loaded the 330 heat pen rounds. And this is where they are going to be delightful. We've got Jagdpanzer E100s in front of us. We are never penning a Jagdpanzer E100 with 201 AP rounds. So we've got the heat rounds in. And these shells will go through these Jagdpanzers. Thankfully, that Jagdpanzer misses because that's a scary, scary thought. Is one of these tanks firing at us. But we're just keeping the shots flying into the lower plates. That one, I think that one penned the unspotted Jagdpanzer while we were firing at the spotted Jagdpanzer. So we got fairly lucky there. But we're up to 2.1k damage. And I'm starting to think, you know, I want to get after this Highlander. The two Jagdpanzers have gotten spotted. The only way they're going to be getting spotted is if they fire. I've only got eight heat rounds left, which I will need... For these Jagdpanzers. And for anything else that's tier 10 that's stupidly armoured. Or highly armoured, I should say, not stupidly armoured. So I've got to go in. We're going to go in, see if we can spot the Jagdpanzers. And also, just get in and flame this Highlander to get rid of the Chinese tier 10 heavy tank. So we spot the Jagdpanzers. Get ourselves safe behind the little ridge so that the Jagdpanzers can't shoot us. And use the flamethrower to finish off the Highlander there. We've loaded the heat rounds, still. We can go through the superstructure of a Jagdpanzer, put it straight through. It's a pretty ballsy move there, to be fair, because that guy could have quite easily just gone, ha, lol, and just smashed around through us for a thousand, but it, you know, we're still alive. It's like, oh no, that's a Death Star! Oh, goodness gracious, what is he doing? Where's he been? But, okay, he'd already lost hit points, and that was the first time he spotted, so I would assume, or not the first time he spotted, but I assume that I may have shot him instead of the other Jagdpanzer with heat. That would make more sense because it's a bit easier to pen. But just as we started to fire the flames at that Death Star, he got shut down by, well, these two people that are in front of us. So it is 11-7 currently, which means most of the enemy team is either in their base or up on the hill at A7, A8, or they're all in the middle at EF5. So we're going to push as aggressively as possible, but stick to this right hand. We're keeping our hand on the right hand wall. And the reason for that is if there's anyone camping on the hill at A6, A7, they'll probably spot us and they'd shoot us quite easily. So I didn't want to give them a free shot. And if I did get spotted, I could just tuck into the wall, get into the rock, stay covered and not take any free damage. So we, we've seen the 140 SP2 and the Agpanzer. We can get up behind them. And get some cheeky shots in. But as we're on the way, it's like, hello, Mr. T32 and Kari. Okay, well, eat my flames. Thankfully, the Kari bounces off our upper plate. It's because this upper plate does have some spaced armor on it. So occasionally, shots can just bounce on it, which is glorious. We use the... That's, again, the utility of the flamethrower. The T32 was only, like, 30 HP. We've used the flamethrower to finish off the T32. And he was out of here. Now, just using the flamethrower against the Kari. And actually, the flamethrower is working as a weapon against us right now. Because I'm flaming this guy. I put him down to a one-shot, but I can't actually see where the ridge line is, and I can't see where his tank starts, and sadly, we couldn't get the shot into the Kari's lower plate to finish him off. But we finished the game with the victory, two kills, 4,230 damage, 2,581 assistance, the ace tanker for 2,057 base XP there, so whenever I played this game, which was actually probably like two days before the first game, ace tankers, man, are sometimes a bit wonky with the base XP, because obviously they fluctuate, so that can happen. So we're on to the third replay, and the third replay we're here on this map, which is Fisherman's Bay. This time we're top tier. We've had two bottom tier games. This one, we are top tier. And we are going to go to the position that I do like to take, which is E6. Because from E6, we can shoot the people that cross into the town, get free shots into them. We can, if we want to be aggressive, go side scrape off of the building that's directly in front of us as well. 
and just spot out and get assistance that way as well. We use the flamethrower to knock down the building that can be in the way at times. Again, it's where the utility of the flamethrower can be. We spot the Tiger One. It's like, hello, Mr. Tiger One. Let me get some free shots. Oh, yeah, the muzzle flash exists. It's one of those really annoying ones that the muzzle flash on this vehicle doesn't exist, except for on certain maps, which is really annoying. So Fisherman's Bait actually has a muzzle flash for the Senjutsu, whereas the other ones you've seen doesn't have it. And you'll see it in a second when I fire at one of these tanks where it just blinds you for a split second, which is, I, I just, it's a pet peeve of mine. I just don't like it in this game. So you can see it there. I just, I hate that muzzle flash with a passion. It's really annoying that on some maps, most of the tanks don't have muzzle flashes. But on other maps, it exists for some reason unbeknownst to anyone else. But who knows? Anyway, I digress. We're up to 638 damage. And on 638 damage, I want more. This is not enough. I'm not happy with this. We want to try and get as much as we possibly can do. So we've seen the medium tank, which is the Chiri. I kind of want to get him if I can. But maybe I can get some cheeky shots at the guys over here. So we've seen the T-34-3, but he's pulled back before we can get any shells down range at him. The SP-1C is not in a position I can also get any shots at him as well. And in fact, the KV-2! That was an AP round from that KV-2. Funky. But we managed to get a shot on the move into the KV-2. And now this Chi-Ri is in front of us. Sadly, the Chi-Ri is out of distance for our flamethrower. Because if we want to use the flamethrower on the Senjutsu, we have to be within 144 meters. Because yes, the flamethrowers do have a max range, and the max range is 144 meters for this Senjutsu, which means we do have to be quite close to the target to be able to get them. And that Chiri was only 177 meters away from us, so we couldn't actually get the, the flamethrowers to hit him. So we got a shot into the KV-2, just looking to finish him off. There we go. Looking at that guy, his barrel did not look big enough for a KV-2. He might have actually been a fail V-2. <gasps> the shock horror! Which means he was using the 107mm gun. Which is not the way to play the KV-2, my friend. You need the big gun to have fun. But yeah, we managed to shut down the KV-2. It's 2.6k damage with two kills. And there's still something at the back. But we know where a lot of their team is. They are a lot more towards the corner at KJ-1. So instead, what I'm going to do is push towards them and see if I can get as close as possible. But as we're on the way, we end up finding a Thunderbolt. And it's like, hello, hello, Mr. Thunderbolt. Are we trying to escape? We get a shot into him on the move, which only tracks him. The two TDs on the left, I'm hoping, are too preoccupied with my team coming out of the town to deal with me. And that, so we can just start farming this poor little Thunderbolt that is completely caught in the open. And you know, we're a Soviet tier 8 tank, we're going to have fun. But we're actually being shot by the Hellcat as well. I was surprised that these guys were actually looking at me, seeing as they were under attack. We bounce on the Thunderbolt, the other Hellcat ends up penning us. And we're just stuck in an awkward crossfire. We make sure we fully aim that shot to shut down the Thunderbolt. And good night, Mr. Tier 6, American Medium Tank. The Diamondback is too preoccupied to deal with us, thankfully, because that would have been bad. But we get a shot into the Hellcat, who has decided to just stay in a position where he's trying to shoot us. And he should have just ran away a long time ago. He stopped! Neo! Neo, why? You are the chosen one, clearly. So, sadly, we couldn't finish that, that Hellcat off because he just, I, I don't know why. I was leading it. He just went, you know, what, I'm going to stop now. And yeah, well, well, we missed the shot. We get an RBRT into the Draugen, who, again, could kill me in one shot if he's firing Hesh. So I didn't want to be too aggressive against it. But I thought, you know what, screw it. We, we, we live life on the edge around here. We bounce him off our upper plate. He is firing APCR. We can take a shot off him if he fires APCR, which we just do. But because I know I've got the flamethrower in, we put one shot into him with the main cannon. Flamethrow him, put him down to a one shot, and finish him off yet again with the main gun. There's only one tank left on the enemy team. It is this medium tank directly in front of us. And once again, that flamethrower is in. We've got the main cannon ready. So we're hoping to get one shot into him and then flamethrower him. But our gun depression is just a bit of a struggle in this position. He does bounce off our turret, though. And I figure, you know, the T-34-3's got a pretty long reload. Let's just go in, flamethrower him, use the main cannon, and then keep flamethrowing. I don't know what happened there, because I thought I fought... Yeah, we just point-blank missed, apparently. But we finished him off with the main cannon. And good night, Mr. T-34-3. 
And we finished the game with a really nice total with the victory. Five kills, 5,300 damage, 485 assistance, 3.7k, no, 3k blocks as well, by the way. Ace Tanker, the high caliber steel wall for 2064. Basics be a pretty great game there for the Senjutsu TO55. Again, great tank. I really do enjoy playing this vehicle. It's just like playing the old school T54, you know, the tier 9, but a tier 8, which is a little bit mental, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. And we're on to the fourth and final replay of this video. Fair play if you're still here. And we're on Duckler Pass. And we're on Duckler Pass Encounter as well, which means they all spawn at K1, K4, and we all spawn down here at A1, A5. So what I was thinking of doing was pushing to E4, or that's what I'd normally do. Actually, I should say that's what I'd probably normally do and push over. But I didn't really pay attention to the spawns. This is a tier 10 game, which is not good. I didn't pay attention to the spawns. And I went, hang on, why is the, the Type 59-2 already here? Oh, oh, right. Well, I'm committing myself anyway. We bounced the Type 59-2. We're being exceptionally aggressive, but people are following us, which is could possibly be very silly. But, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you just got to pay attention to the map, people. Okay, don't just sit there talking and then go, hang on a minute, why is everyone already here? Oh, that's not good. But it's working out because our team has actually pushed with us. We get a nice shot into the side of that 114 SP2 side turret. Who just, he gave us a free shot, which we take. We want to get rid of that guy if we can because he's got, obviously, a big gun, big penetration, nice damage and it's gonna hurt if that guy hits us so the quicker that guy's dead the better i don't want to push at this moment in time because he is there if we push the likelihood is he'll just poke out and shoot us and again we're in a tier 10 game i don't want to bleed the hit points if i can help it sillily right but he's not currently poking out and i'm thinking if he's gonna just sit behind there we know there's some guys behind these rocks We've got quite a lot of team with us. We've got an IS-4 with us. So, okay, Mr. IS-4, you're going to be the shield, my friend. The 114 SP2 pokes out. We get a shot on the move that tracks and pens in. We'll take that. But the guy's on a 550 hit points. But I can get some shots into this Type 63 and flame him. So we get a shot into the side of him. Fire all of the flames. He's burning away. We put him down to a one-shot, and the flames finish him off. And we get basically most of that guy's health in the blink of an eye. Now there's a 50B, because the 114 SP2 is dead. We don't have to worry about that. And the 50B is just fought looking at us, because of course he is. It's like, uh, okay, so, sure. He puts the flames out with a fire extinguisher, which you can see that little symbol there that was next to his name, the little flames with a cross through it that means that he added it fire extinguisher he activated this fire extinguisher which put out the fire and meant that he couldn't be set on fire again for another like 10 seconds so if you see that symbol there is no point keeping using the flamethrower you might as well stop wait for that symbol to disappear and then use the flamethrower and realistically if you see that symbol as well you may as well just reload the flamethrower don't just switch back to the main cannon reload it and then switch back to the main cannon because then by the time their fire extinguisher effect has finished. The flamethrower will be fully loaded to go. And you can just flame to your heart's content. But this is where it's nice. Because the 780 is a bit of a painful tank to pen. At times. Especially with... Even, well, even with 330 heat. Sometimes it can just absorb shells that you sit there going... Huh? So you can use the flamethrower and just go and keep the damage racking up anyway. Although we couldn't really do it there. Because he actually put it out with the fire extinguisher. And meant that yeah, our flames meant nothing. Now there's Waffle E100 directly in front of us, and Mr. Waffle E100, we want your hit points, sir. You've got a big turret, and you're very easy to pen. And we did get two shots into that guy before he went down. Now the one thing that would have been good is if we actually got next to that Waffle E100 and used the flames, because the one thing that the flamethrower is very, very effective at is open-topped tanks. Like a Waffle E100, say like a Hellcat, or something along those lines. Or a ball sig as well. That's another one. Iron rain, etc., etc. If you use a flamethrower against those vehicles, it has a devastating effect against their crew. It is massively big for killing crew and damaging modules in open top tanks. And you can absolutely decimate their ability to be alive. Or be effective, I should say, than be alive. Because you'll end up doing like 300 damage. But you've killed all the crew. 
and maybe some of the modules are damaged, and you sit there going, oh, that looked painful. That would have been... That's one of those ones where it'd be nice to have the old post-battle results screen that we used to have pre-6.0, where you could see what modules and stuff you damaged in enemy tanks. But yeah, anyway. There's only two tanks left on the enemy team. It's an Earthshaker and a 705. We have hit points, so at this point, I don't care. I'm getting in close to the 705A going, Hello, my friend. Do you like flames, mother trucker? I have flames, and I like... I am one with the flames. I was born in the flames. Dracaris! Let's go! And this is what can be fun about the Senjutsu. You do that. But we fired heat into the side of the 7058, so our shot just got absorbed. It is what it is. And we didn't get any more damage out of penetrations on that guy, sadly. But we do finish the game with a very, very good total. We finish with the victory. Three kills, 5.8k damage, which is glorious. 1,032 assistance. So that's what? 7k combined nearly. The ace tank of the confederate, the high caliber, for 2,296 base XP. A really great game for the Senjutsu TO55 in a tier 10 lobby. Well, it wasn't really that tier 10, but you get the point. And yeah, that's the Senjutsu TO55, part of the Metal Fest. It's a really solid tank, and it is a hell of a lot of fun to play. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Success.